Hi guys, this is Andrew with headphones.com. Welcome to the Headphone Show, and today we're gonna to be talking about the Dunu Luna. This is a high-end flagship IEM that's using a single beryllium dynamic driver, and this comes in right at around $1,700. So let's take a look. I first heard the Luna at CanJam New York uh, in uh, February, and I was actually it was at the very end of the show, and I was just about to leave, and I just happened to walk by the Dunu booth there, and so this was actually the last product that I tried at the show, and it immediately grabbed my attention. I was like, "Whoa, this is uh, this is not what I expected. This is not something that I was uh, thinking would sound the way that it did," uh, because when you look at it, it's fairly small and almost a little bit. Unassuming. Interestingly, when you when you put it in your ears, when you wear it, uh, it's got a very shallow fit to it. Um, so something that you know, I think a lot of people who are hesitant about IEMs, something that they're worried about is having to force them really far into into you know the ear to get it to sound right. And with the Luna, it's intended to have a bit of a shallow fit there. By the way, for anyone wondering, the Luna comes with this uh, carrying pouch here. And inside you get a ton of different tips. It's just, whoops, dropped them. In addition to the tips, you also get uh, this modular cable system here. Let me just take this out of the bag. You can take this existing 3.5 millimeter tip that's on here right now, and you can remove it, and you can replace it with, uh, say you wanna use a balanced one, you just line it up and then it plugs in like that. The Dunu Luna is using a single beryllium driver, uh, a single beryllium dynamic driver in here. Of course, beryllium is a really interesting material that some headphone companies have been putting in their headphones, like for example, Focal does this with the Utopia and the Stelia. ZMF uses some beryllium for the Verite. And there are also other IEM companies that are putting you know beryllium into their, uh, into their IEMs as well. And usually the super high-end IEM world has been kind of reserved for multi-balanced armature IEMs or uh, some sort of hybrid system where they have, you know, multiple balanced armatures there for the mids and the highs, but then, you know, dynamic driver or several dynamic drivers, the base frequencies. And so the big question that's kind of been on my mind with a lot of this stuff is, do these single beryllium driver IEMs hold up, you know, to the detail retrieval and the technical performance that I'm looking for at the price points that they come in at? Because these are very expensive at like $1,600, $1,700 these start to get up there and, and they have a lot of competition at those price points as well. And my answer at the moment is that yes, it can compete. While I think there are some multi-balanced armature or hybrid IEMs out there that outperform uh, the Luna and the A8000 as far as details is concerned, uh, I think the U12T from 64 Audio is still a little bit better there for, for overall detail. Uh, it, it's very competitive around this price. And I think actually at the 16 to $1,700 price mark where this comes in at, I would say this is one of the most technically impressive sounding uh, for detail retrieval and image clarity and all that kind of stuff. Now for space and stage, I would put the Luna a little bit more on the average side. Uh, I don't think it's quite as spacious as the biggest soundstage IEMs out there, but at the same time, IEMs don't really have that much for soundstage to begin with, so I don't think it's really held back by anything. And then the imaging is also quite good on the Luna. Uh, there's a lot of room for layering and depth and a lot of, you know, the ability to kind of look forward into the music. It's a term, it's a phrase that I like to use when describing depth and layering. Uh, and the Dunu Luna does a really, really good job there as well. Now for dynamics, that's I think where the Dunu Luna is uh, a shining example of what's possible with dynamic driver IEMs, with a single beryllium dynamic driver in there. Um, this punches really hard. It's a very yeah, engaging and, and punchy kind of sound. Uh, slams like a truck. Uh, I, I love that quality about it. And I think this kind of demonstrates the benefits of these driver types in IEMs over the, the multi-balanced armature stuff. I don't think you can get a multi-balanced armature IEM that'll have the same kind of bass slam and impact as the Dunu Luna does. Um, so that's really uh, impressive here. And because this is a single dynamic driver uh, for timbre, this doesn't have the multi-balanced armature uh, smearing that I often worry about. So I got really nothing all that much to complain about when it comes to the timbre here, apart from its frequency response and how that relates to timbre as well. Uh, which we'll talk about next. All right, so for the bass with the Duna Luna, this is exactly where I want the bass frequencies to be. This is exactly the level of energy that I like. It's not too much. It doesn't sound bloated or boomy. Uh, I do find that it 
it could have extended a little further in the sub base, but the overall energy is exactly where it should be there, especially for the mid and upper base. And then because it's, you know, really punchy and has good slam to it, uh, it doesn't feel like the base is lacking at all there either. So uh, definitely it gets good marks for the base response. And then it's not uh, withdrawn or anything in the mid range either. Um, but the problem starts to show up in the upper mid range. And my issue is that right between like three and four and a half K Hertz, uh, there's a very strong elevation there. On its own, the upper mid range emphasis isn't a huge problem. I think it's possible to do this in a tasteful way. And I kind of like a little bit of an upper mid range emphasis there on over ear headphones like the Hi-Fi Man Aria and the Ananda and stuff like that, uh, because it gives a little bit of extra clarity there for piano tones and female vocals and things like that. My problem with the Luna's tuning is that the treble above that range, like starting around like, you know, five and a half K Hertz is uh, quite a bit subdued by comparison. Now, it's not rolled off or anything like that. It's just that it sits lower. So that means that the overall upper mid range to treble balance is a little bit odd. Um, and it means that you just notice that upper mid range uh, forwardness a little bit too much, causing it to be a little bit shouty and a little bit glaring for certain types of tones. Uh, specifically, electric guitars come across very shouty on the on the Dunu Luna. And then for the rest of the treble, it stays reasonably well extended. There's no you know serious roll off or any issues there, and it's also not sibilant or anything like that. So with the Luna, I would encourage you to try using different tips because they change the, the frequency response of this IEM more significantly, I find, than just about everything else that I've tried. Uh, and one of the reasons for that is because, I think at least, of the shallow fit. And you know, when you change the tips, it'll change the way that it fits and how far it goes into your ear. And then this is gonna also impact the way that you hear it, the way the frequency response is for you. And apparently there are some spin fit uh, CP240 double flange tips that uh, make the frequency response and tonality a little bit more agreeable, I, I think for a wider range uh, of audiences. Um, they subdue the upper mid range a little bit and then bring the treble back into balance. So that's something that, you know, if you own a Luna or you're trying to evaluate a Luna, I'd recommend trying out. In any case, let's first compare the Dunu Luna to the Final Audio A8000. Now, the reason why the Final Audio A8000 is uh, the most important comparison here is because this is the other high end beryllium driver IEM uh, that's out there. And it's interesting to do this comparison because they sound so dramatically different from one another. Um, now they both have you know incredible detail and slam and all that, and actually the bass for both of them is handled exceptionally well. I think there's actually a little bit more bass energy and emphasis on the uh, A8000, uh, but overall they're both excellent in the bass. And I think actually the A8000 comes down a little bit earlier in the frequency response, so it might be a little bit more well defined. But at the same time. Uh, yeah, they, they both are, are phenomenal in the bass. What I notice immediately with the A8000 that is not there on the Dunu Luna is there's this sort of shimmering quality there at around like 10k hertz, uh, and, and not in a good way. And then also right at around 5.5k hertz, there's a peak on the A8000 that also isn't there on the Dunu Luna. That's when the Luna starts to go down a little bit. With the A8000, that's, it, it's definitely a very, uh, a very present peak. And the problem with the 5.5k hertz peak is that this causes what I like to call percussion compression. It means that certain elements of percussion hits, like snare drums and tambourines and cymbals and things like that, that are emphasized over their resonant splash and sizzle quality. Um, and that I think is probably the one of the biggest issues with the A8000, but at the same time, it's overall upper mid range to treble balance is a little bit better, uh, quite a bit better than that of the Dunu Luna. So overall with the A8000, the, the tonal balance is better, but at the same time, the A8000 is also the one that's more fatiguing to listen to uh, because the Luna is more subdued there in the treble. So I think both, uh, the Luna and the A8000 are trying to identify what the lesser of two evils is uh, when going for this kind of tuning that they have. And I think this has almost resulted in both of them having a few issues. The last thing that I wanna mention between the A8000 and the Dunu Luna is that I do find the Luna to be easier to EQ. You know, it doesn't really require that fine grained of an EQ. It's more just you have to subdue that upper mid range region by a bit. Uh, and maybe boost the treble by a bit. Whereas with the A8000, I had to be quite a bit more specific. Um, now I know these are IEMs and you 
can't really EQ IEMs anywhere near as easily as you can over your headphones due to the use case of being more portable with them. But I know there's a lot of people who just use IEMs, you know, at their computers and they have their EQ profiles there as well. So for anybody who's doing that, um, I do find the Luna to be the easier one to EQ uh, with fewer filters and fewer adjustments. But the other comparison that I want to go with is the Campfire Audio Solaris, which is in here. I should probably have taken it out of the case ahead of time. I find that the overall tonal balance of the Campfire Solaris for the mids and treble is quite a bit better, but I do find that the Luna is more technically capable than the Campfire Solaris, especially in the bass and lower mids. So really, I think between these two, it comes down to how much do you value the technical performance advantage of the Luna over the frequency response and tonality uh, and total balance advantage of the Campfire Solaris. Um, they're, they're kind of opposites in that way. You know, the Luna has a very forward upper mid-range and the Campfire Solaris is a, quite a bit more of a relaxed upper mid-range. And I think maybe somewhere between the two would probably be uh, ideal. <laughs> the other IEM that I think everybody needs to be paying attention to is Dunu's DK3001 Pro. For my preferences and the kind of tonal balance that I like, the DK3001 is the, is the IEM that I would end up choosing between the two. And that's surprising considering this only comes in at around $470. Uh, so this is the one that in my mind has a, a frequency response that's a little bit more agreeable, it's a little more balanced there between the upper mids and the treble. Um, and as much as the Luna has better technical performance, because it's a challenge to actually EQ headphones while on the go, uh, like if you're you know using a DAP or something like that, they do have EQ built in, but you can't be super specific there. Uh, the the DK3001 Pro is the one that I would end up using, I think, more regularly. But in any case, stay tuned for this uh, for the review of this one, which should be coming pretty soon here. So in conclusion, do I recommend the Dunu Luna? Well, I think if you're looking for the best technical performance at around this price, uh, this is worth a listen, right? I don't think it quite dethrones the U12T from uh, 64 Audio, but there are certain things about the Luna that I think might be preferable, like, for example, its bass response and the slam and punch and impact that it gives you. And then, of course, the detail here is also, yeah, pretty much the best that I've heard around this price. Uh, I think, again, it's something where it probably merits evaluation and consideration. Um, however, I do also think that the tonal balance for the Luna is not quite what I like. It's not to my preference. I find the upper mid-range to be a little bit too strong and then the treble to be a little bit too subdued. And so for my use case, which would be IEMs on the go, I tend to prefer uh, Dunu's DK3001 which has a more agreeable frequency response to my ear, even though its technical performance is not on the same level as the Luna. Uh, and then also the Campfire Audio Solaris, which I think still at around that you know high-end $1,500 price range for IEMs, I think this is still something that is worth taking seriously. Uh, and I think I would actually gravitate more towards this over the Dunu Luna uh, for you know portable use at least. You know, if I'm at home or at the office and I have my EQ software there at the ready, uh, yeah, I think the Luna would be the one that I would end up using more often. Uh, but I know that not everybody is comfortable doing that or they're not in environments where they're doing that. And so my recommendation is still going to be the Campfire Solaris uh, instead. And in a way, I kind of think that both the Luna and the A8000 from Final Audio, these beryllium driver IEMs, I think, you know, these are more just ideas where... It's like, okay, what can we actually get out of these? How can we push this uh, and see what we can get uh, for this driver type in an IEM? And so I'm excited to see what both companies do in the future with this tech. And maybe they can find a way to get the tonal balance to be a little bit more, uh, you know, uh, closer to my preferences. <laughs> Anyways, that does it for this review. If you guys like what I'm doing here, consider subscribing. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye for now.